come out, it was pitch black. He had said to everybody, go. You may go. Not a word. No, no rustling, no nothing. Those final 72 companions, or 120 companions, however many the narration states, those final companions were they were there, they were the loyal ones until the end. As they switched off the lights, nobody left. As they switched back on the candles, they're walking out. Qasim says to his uncle, Shah Qasim turns to his uncle and says to him, Oh my uncle, Ya Amma, tell me, will I be amongst the Shaheed tomorrow? Will I be amongst those names who have been written in destiny? Will I be amongst those whom the Ahl al-Bayt lovers will come and give ziyarat to every single day? The response back from the companions, the response back from his uncle, Oh Qasim, how do you see death? Look at the response from the son of al Mujtaba. To me, death is sweeter than honey. Can you imagine anything more beautiful? Can you imagine a child who is said to be no more than just maybe at the maximum a few years older than the age of Baloo, or maybe even a few years under the age of Baloo, to be able to respond to such as this? The interesting thing before we go into the Masai about Qasim, I want everybody to understand this and understand the situation and how black-hearted the Muslims were at that time. Why had the Muslims come on the plains of Karbala to face the Ahl al-Bayt? They said that you were rising against the Caliph of the time. You are rising and you are being a rebel against Yazid, the Caliph of the time. We say to the Muslims, or the so-called Muslims on the day of Karbala, on the 10th of Muharram, that Qasim, when he stood in front of the enemy, he said, I am Qasim ibn al-Hasan. He would highlight that he is the son of the caliph that they once followed. We ask you, all Muslims of the time then, how could you use the analogy that you were going to battle Hussein because he was facing against or rising against the caliph when you were rising against the son of the caliph whom you once held? Where is your logic, O Muslims? How then could you fight against Hussein? Even to the Muslims today, how now can you not uphold the message of Hussein when such a young child of 13 or 14 would come out and he would state that he is the son of your previous caliph? Qasim goes into the tent to meet his uncle. He goes and he continuously asks him and says to him, Oh my uncle, please, allow me to go and fight. I have already seen Ali in the Lakhra go and fight. I have already seen Awna Muhammad go fight. Please now, let me go and fight. Each time, how can an uncle here, anybody who is a father or a mother or an uncle here, imagine your nephew came to you now and said to you, I want to go fight against an enemy of a hundred thousand. You look down upon a child who is no more than 13 years old. How could you give him the permission to go and do so? What did he go and do? As soon as he went, he went back outside the tent. He went to his tent where his mother Ramla, one of the narrations said that his mother was called Ramla. Ramla comes to him and he begins to weep to his mother. They come inside the tent and they find that there's a chest there. He goes and picks up the chest and presents it to Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Aba Abdullah brings the chest in his hand. Can you imagine now what he would be thinking? He opens up the chest and he sees inside it a letter written to him from his own brother Hassan. Imam al Hassan al Islam has written a testimony to Aba Abdullah al Hussein. It is narrated that in the books of history, there was a discussion between Abba Abdullah and Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba. And he was saying at that time, Oh my brother, your sacrifice will come on the day. Please, I will not be there at that time. But please remember that I will send somebody to represent me. This was what was written upon the testimony. One brother says to another brother, I cannot be here upon this day to protect you. Oh brothers amongst us, you would do anything to protect your brother if the sword came upon him. If anything came upon him, any brother or any sister or any family member, you would give your life to protect. But in the fact that you know you will not be there, you would certainly send somebody to fight upon your behalf. And that is exactly what Mushtaba did. And Mushtaba was in, in Baqi, but his presence was felt there on, on the day. He comes and he gives his wazir. He comes and says to his brother Hussein, Oh my Hussein, I will not be there on the 10th of Muharram. Please take us, take us, uh, pass it. Please take us there. 
around the Nabi is to be he narrates it that he comes and he puts up on his own turban upon Qasim he puts his own turban and puts it upon his young nephew and sends him out towards the battlefield he also puts upon his own chain mail his own armor if we say to you Abu Abdullah how heavy would your chain mail have been how heavy would your armor have been but if the 13 year old child would have gone out and taken him with the chain mail Qasim goes out and he fights bravely it is narrated that he goes and kills 25 men until one man comes and says to another companion of his in the enemy army that I swear I will be the one to slay him. As Qasim comes, as he comes, he goes and he crosses against him. Qasim falls to the floor. It is narrated that another strike takes place upon Qasim, which slices his whole hand in half. At this point, as his arm is cut, he raises his other hand and he calls out to his uncle, Ya Amma, Assalamu Alaikum Ya Amma, Ya Abba Abdullah, Abba Abdullah Al Hussein, and Abu Bakr come rushing out to the They come rushing out. It is narrated that all the enemy there, they become so frightened that seeing the two lions of Ahl al Bayt come running out. They don't know what to do. You can imagine how many enemies there were in the ranks at the time. They all turn out of fear. One goes left, one goes right, one goes straight, one goes back. So on their horses facing a 13-year-old child. The horses who trample over the body of Shah Qasim. Shah Qasim's body is broken into two. The tribulation that Qasim faces is different to the tribulation we told them. When Abu Abdullah al Hussein was facing the hoods of enemy, he had already passed away from his mind. He said, You are Qasim, peace be upon you. For your body was trampled whilst you were alive. Whilst you were alive, your body was trampled upon. It is narrated that the hoods break upon the chest of Shah Qasim. The 13 year old nephew of Abu Abdullah is scattered upon the floor. He calls out to his uncle. They come running, his chest is broken into pieces. The uncle of Shah Qasim comes. Abu Abdullah comes and he puts his face against the face of Qasim. He looks down at him. The narration stays. The saddest thing about this narration stays. That as Abu Abdullah in Hussein comes, Shah Qasim is still alive. His chest may have been broken. The narration states he is kicking his feet in pain. His feet are kicking in the air like this. Oh my uncle, come and take his pain away from me. His feet are still kicking in the air. His body may have been broken, but his legs were still working against the enemy. Abu Abdullah Hussein puts his chest against the broken chest of his nephew. He puts his hand upon his hand. He looks upon his hand. His hand is cut in half and is bleeding. What more can he do for him other than wait until the final moments take away from Shah? Hassan breathes his heart. I guarantee his father had come to quench his thirst upon that day. What did Abu Abdullah see when his brother was coming? Can you imagine when Hussein was watching Hassan approach? Hassan is approaching with the bowl of water for his son. Hussein must have said to him, Peace be upon you, brother. I am sorry I could not protect your son upon this day. What could I have done for your son? It is narrated that Abba Abdullah takes up off his Abba. He takes his Abba off. He picks up the broken body of Hassan. He goes and takes a piece of the body from the left and a piece of body from the right. He puts it into the plate of the Abba. He ties the Abba up and picks up the Abba. What can we say to you, Abba Abdullah? What can we say to you upon this day? Other than turn our face to turn to Dimashq and say, Assalamu alaikum ya Zainab al -Kumala. At least Abba Abdullah could pick up the broken body. But Zainab, all he could do was watch and see the bones being scattered by the Lord. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un.